So, good evening. Although I've got stage fright, it's great to be here this evening, combining my love of both history and photography, to bring you a very brief history of the Maudsville Sea Fall. Standing abandoned in the Thames estuary, rusting and weathered by the sea, and the passage of time, the remaining army and naval sea forts are a magnificent sight, imposing and eerie. Those of us lucky enough to have been terrified by Doctor Who monsters may remember the army forts making an appearance in the 1968 Fury of the Deep. And people from all over the world remain fascinated by them to this day. I myself was still on the coast of Whitstable, fascinated by the structures on the horizon, never dreaming that I would one day have the chance to actually climb up on board. Designed by and named after civil engineer Guy Monsell. Monsell served in Royal Engineers on the Western Front for a year during World War I, and he was recalled to Britain to be involved in several engineering projects. By the Second World War, he was a respected civil engineer. And I have read that it was, but I have read that it was at his happiest, tending to his herd of cows, and it was reported to have said that he got far better sense out of them than he did his military superiors. Maltzell was an expert in pre-stressed concrete structures, and that was the ideal choice of engineer to work with the Admiralty on a scheme to design defences for the Thames estuary. This picture shows the 1942 placement of the Maltzell forts. Firstly, four naval forts, Ruff's Tower, Knock John, Sunk Head and Tongue Sands. These were all built with wide cylindrical legs, supporting a platform top. Then, following the success of these, three army forts named Fort Knorr, Red Sand and Shivering Sand quickly followed. This picture shows a cross-section of a naval fort. The cylindrical legs, or towers, are 60 foot high, 24 feet in diameter and 1 foot thick. The legs divided into seven floors, contained living quarters and stores for the occupants. And I have actually been into one of those legs, and it's certainly not somewhere that I'd like to spend too much time. It was very dank, it was musty, but obviously we're talking years later. But it just, as you go down, you could see there was an old lift shaft, and it, it was just wasn't a very nice place to be. And obviously, as you get further down, you're below sea level and you can hear the waves hitting the side and you just sort of know where you are. The platforms above contained a galley, officer's mess, radar and a gun platform. The forts were erected on land at Red Lion Wharf in Gravesend, floated out and anchored on the seabed. It is reported that the naval officer in charge of the first fort sinking failed to follow the precise instructions given by Maunsell and he opened the water inlet valves in haste which resulted in the fort pitching to one side and almost toppling over and it was quite a lot of men on there as well so it would have taken them with it. I'm not sure if this actually depicts that happening but it certainly looks a bit dodgy to me. I wouldn't want to be up on the top of that. <laughs> This picture shows one of the army forts during constructions. These were distinctive in their futuristic design with four long legs supporting circular fort, fort buildings, all connected by walkways. Each equipped either with guns or a searchlight and all had accommodation. Again, they were built on land and floated out. And this is a then and now pic picture taken by me on my first trip to see the forts. Just going round and we had a beautiful day, as you can see on the reflections, but I, I was actually quite lucky to get back and then find an old picture. But just going round them, it's, as you, the, the boat takes you round, you just keep taking pictures of them because they're just so majestic and every beautiful from every angle. This is not John Fort today and under construction in the late 1941. In 2009, it was noted that the fort was listing and it's been said that possibly the pontoon it stands on has broken. So one day we might lose Knock John Fort. 
Up to 250 soldiers were stationed on each army fort at any one time, and often bad weather would have hampered their chances of getting back home at the end of their long duty of up to six weeks. It was documented that the isolation would often lead to what is known as fort madness, long periods of inactivity punctuated by action, cramped living, missing home, and being surrounded only by sea. It just must have been terrible. And when we speak of the war and things like this, we speak with hindsight. But during the action, not knowing how it would end must have been dreadful. played a major part in defending the port of London during the war, as this was a great navigational channel for the enemy. In the event, the forts had a short active life, but proved very useful in defending the estuary from the German Luftwaffe, determined to, to destroy London's major port. As between them, 22 aircraft, 30 flying bombs were shot down. After the war, they were soon decommissioned and eventually abandoned to the elements. But we can only imagine how many lives they saved. In the 1960s, the forts were brought back to life as platforms for pirate radio stations. Musician and politician, Screaming Lord Such, began the trend of broadcasting Radio Such from Shivering Sands, closely followed by Radio Invicta, later Radio 390, broadcasting from Red Sand Fort, Radio Essex broadcast from Not John Fort, and they were locked in legal wrangles, and the radio stations finally lost their battle to broadcast, and all had disappeared by 1967. Since this time, the forts have had a brief appearance in Doctor Who. As I said, and in 1984, U2 music video and a Slade film, and there is some footage on YouTube of the interior of an army fort, but sadly the Doctor Who episodes were white in a BBC cull. Ruff's fort was occupied by Roy Bates, which is another completely different story. In the 1960s, in the mid 1967, it was declared the Principality of Sealand. And it still remains in the Bates family, and it's now owned by his son and heir, Prince Michael. Guy Anson Monsell went on to be involved in the design of other concrete structures, including the Hammersmith flyover. He passed away in 1961. This is his grave here. And it's, he's buried in Southborough Cemetery near Tunbridge Wells. And it's such a simple grave for a man that achieved so much in his time on this earth. And time and the weather and the boating accidents have taken their toll. And today, on the actual forts, and today only Red Sand Army Fort stands complete, while Shivering Sands is now only six towers. Um, North Fort was dismantled after a ship collided with two of its towers in 1953, and that actually resulted in the death of four um, civilian watchmen from Kent. I have heard a story that they were actually playing cards on board at the time. So of the naval forts, only Ruff's Fort, which is Sealand, and Knock John Fort remain, which is still remarkable for structures built in 1977. Last weekend I had the opportunity to climb up a ladder onto Fort G1 of Red Sand. And this is not all too bad for someone, and I'm genuinely afraid of heights, but it's mind over matter and determination. Because, yes, this really is me, almost 60 feet above the sea, <laughs> in a narrow bosun's chair. And I'm very lucky to have visited Sealand. It's something that money can't buy. It's a friend of a friend that I managed to spend the day there. But the boat pulls up. The chair comes down, that's me coming down then. I wasn't too bad by that point. But the boat comes up, there is a video of this, and, um, but I'm not going to show you tonight. <laughs> you jump on board of this, this little seat like this, and it's slippery. The guy that is, he's varnished it, and I think, why did you varnish that? <laughs> and I jump, jump back onto it, and then the boat goes, and up you go, and you go right up high, and then reach across. And I really am afraid of heights, so I don't know how I did it. But I did, and that's me coming down. So I was quite proud of that. Um, and what the future holds for these historically important structures isn't known. Um, Project Red Sand hopes to raise awareness and obviously money towards the, the fort's desperate plight and to restore Fort G1 for the generations to come. 
ex-pilot, the boat that you can see there, run tours to view all of the ports and um, the nearby beautiful wind farm. And for the more adventurous, occasional visits to G1 are available, which is getting off onto the platform like I did last weekend, up a big long ladder, onto a platform, up another ladder. It is doable and it's great to do. But these can be booked online and you can see the, the wind farms. It's just a great day, even if you just go on the boat and you can take a picnic and it's a lovely day. So it's certainly well worth a visit. Thank you very much. Considering by your own admission you were nervous, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, just from seeing that image of you halfway up there, you've clear, you're clearly very, very brave. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions at all? No questions? Did the Germans try to pack the ports in the war? Oh, no, I don't, I don't believe they did. I don't believe they ever come under fire. And I mean, I can find out definitely, but that is, I'm sure I've heard that, that they never actually came under fire. Oh, you got off quite light. Ooh, one more question. <laughs> did the um, similar structures in the stone, was it the same architect? No, I don't think it's the, um, I don't think it was, but I can find that one out. I know he did do a lot of things, but I can find it's an interesting thought, and I will find out. So yeah, no, thank you for that. Because you can um, you can rent that out from the Holland Club now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've actually heard that. Yeah, you can actually. No, I think that was built. That's a um, a Napoleonic board, I think. Yeah. Because that was the the other Doctor Who structure, wasn't it? I think it was the Dalek, or that might have been the Doctor Sea Devil. Yeah. And I think you can actually hire that out. You can um, go there for dinner and then you're taken back. So no, I think that was built in, 19, in 1888, I think. But I, I, don't, I don't know definitely. Right. Yep, yeah, one more question. Can I ask you, Darren, are you really that little girl who wouldn't go on the first run of the night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really, to this day, I don't know how I did it. I just, it really is my nerve matter. So I said, you know, even... Folks, um, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the stage my partner in crime. Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks again to our sponsors. If you would like to sponsor us, reach hundreds of thousands of people every single month, and help support our project at the same time, contact us for details.